this necessary also one of the important issue because technology will growing will go 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 will go continuously growing but as a librarian information says, is it necessary to accept a breaching which are coming because there are completely two field one is our librarianship and another is information technology if you always try to march i am not giving any any comments from my side but we have to decide whether along with the development of information technology issues field we should also march along with them or we should give a second thought which are important which are not important not i'm not saying not important which we may go a bit late also so in this way we have to decide about our future course of librarianship because if we are completely going along with them then certainly to some extent or even to a large extent we may missing our own domain keeping domain intact keeping librarian information science intact to what extent information technology can be used for us it will not guide us it will help us in developing our professionalism in developing our librarianship so no doubt i just remember one thing when i have done my masters from sheffield university there is a big question what is automation in 1990 i am talking about this one after some years i found that what is automation whether there should be automation is a relevant question it's a relevant question because how automation was there after after 10 years of reading 2020 now it is not how automation should be there in libraries it is there to what extent we are able to imply the ict devices to our library for the benefit of for the benefit of our target group for the benefit of reader library is a facilitator we have to facilitate we have to make the contact between people between reader and the resources and we have to use our technology to what extent it is possible but at the same time developing resources in right perspective also another issues that we have to consider all this thing then again i am talking about that web i mean opac opac is the generally first step of library automation no doubt but now opac is also a, whether you have the opac is also a relevant question now we have to go to web opac the latest module even web opac is also available in online mode we can just you manually you need not work in the in your library you can go to any any and get it downloaded then you can retrieval system yes it's a continuous process no doubt you can improve the retrieval system although i am of the opinion that retrieval system is a very good domain for librarian information such we are we should develop our expertise to what extent it is possible to make the contact to retrieve the information in and around us to a large extent which we are going to listen to our from our expert now then earlier it was the as you do uh, uh, the, this uh, document delivery now it is completely online document delivery irrespective of physical document or digital document if it is physical document, it should be in, it is expected in uh, digitization and make it digital then online document delivery is one of the major issues now and this is coming and we are marching in the right direction now there are so many things we'll be discussing to what extent is possible during this time about web 2.0 and libraries library 2.0 digital library where in like digital library is another issue nowadays it's coming of course most of the things are i do it is say that it's a new domain but we are in between then digitization and ir is another issues that we have to consider about this one also we are not uh, i mean a large number of libraries have developed has started to develop then nowadays new things new issues like social networking the link we are making with you that we are going to have the web narrowness these issues are completely dominated by social networking sites social networking problem and library is becoming a part and parcel of the whole process of social networking system then uh, the another issues are coming and we are in the middle or even we have faced complete the phase that situation use of rfid uh, technology in libraries we have already 
uh, done out of social network whatsapp is one of the major um, ingredients that we are having then the last uh, then the last but one was is cloud computing which is very much predominant nowadays in library and information science field and now qr codes is also a dominant thing i have just mentioned some of them i cannot make all these things but we we'll listen to our expert but my request will be the expert will be that along with that so without losing our own identity without without i mean ignoring the librarian librarianship we are not expected to go to the line shown by different people we have to go but on the basis of this as a whole we are considering about all these issues the asli when are proposing and we have invited people dr sriram and dr fr sumer before that i must inform you that we have invited professor lakshman rao he is from usman university but due to, due to sudden death of his younger brother yesterday presently today his funeral takes place i pray god for the peace of his eternal soul so lakshman rao responsible person of his family eldest eldest son so lakshman rao is busy with that he very regretfully he expressed his inability and he has helped me in getting requesting dr ram sriram to help us to tide over the situation i am thankful to dr sriram for his kind acceptance of our request just to introduce dr sriram he is the deputy librarian and nodal officer of ipr cell thapar institute of technology engineering and technology patiala prior to that he was in JP University of Science and Technology Information Technology he is a man of information technology i i i after going through his bio that i have seen he was awarded with commonwealth professional fellowship in 2013 and visited university of east london for a brief period of 3 months he was a fellowship of icssr nrct and he he was there in thailand another area Dr Ram is a techno savvy librarian and implemented many modern ICT tools in the libraries of uh, present library and earlier library including RFID and CCTV surveillance presently work, he is working on a on implementation research support service in his institute library in a very positive way once again I express my thanks to Dr Ramara Sriram Dr Sriram Uh, to be a resource person here today in the first webinar of ISLE, I now pass over to Dr. Sri Ram to listen to his discussion about the topic that you have mentioned. Dr. Sri Ram, please. Thank you, thank you, Professor Larkel, for uh, uh, this your uh, kind introduction. And uh, I understand that uh, uh, replacing Professor Lakshman Rao uh, place or uh, taking his place is very very big challenge. Uh, because i know uh, how erudite he is and uh, suddenly uh, because of uh, the uh, problem he faced in his family i uh, he has given me uh, this challenging task to uh, start the presentation uh, on the emerging technologies or what are the trends in technologies being used in the library uh, going to be covered in the future so uh, before i i just uh, uh, sharing my screen so that i can have uh, 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 i'm sure uh, my screen is visible so uh, my screen is visible sir yes sir okay okay thank you so uh, this is actually very uh, uh, this topic is very very vast and uh, summarizing into few hours is very very difficult uh, challenge but as uh, professor has set all the agenda for us and uh, i had tried to in within uh, a limited time i try to uh, find out the uh, suitable solution which we can imply uh, in coming days uh, in our libraries uh, during uh, uh, short term mid term and long term so before i start i want to raise some of the questions which is very essential to understand that uh, because uh, the professor has already told that we have to understand that how extent uh, we should know the technology but we have to understand the limitations and we have to understand the how far we can uh, uh, we can adopt such kind of uh, technology into the library uh, keeping the pace uh, keeping the uh, uh, soul of the library uh, as a as a 
a prime factor before uh, understanding any any before implementing any technology into the library so there are so many things happening uh, in today's uh, academic and research scenario research library where uh, new technology new tools are coming every day and we have to understand that how far we can implement those technology in day to day library operation so uh, i want to uh, to put some questions how we are why we are going to uh, uh, use these technology in, and what are the uh, trends happening into the library and what is going to happen in next few years uh, in terms of uh, uh, technology uh, application in the library so understanding about what uh, which important uh, uh, developments in educational technology is uh, taking place and which is uh, going to be most important to the library in next few years because uh, our education system is very dynamic every time uh, especially the technology oriented or engineering i'm being engineering institution librarian i'm uh, seeing a lot of diversification a lot of changes uh, in the academic library happening in, in case of engineering and technology education institution we are talking earlier we were talking about uh, the uh, uh, education related to uh, practical oriented now we are uh, going to experiential learning where students not only uh, 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 attend the classes but also experience the current uh, real time scenario into the education uh, sector in their lab uh, um, working on the uh, uh, machines working on the tools working on the technique and they feel uh, they understand they feel comfortable what kind of uh, uh, real time experience uh, they are having while while working on those uh, tools and technology the second is what important development is educational technologies uh, education technology Uh, is missing and where our uh, uh, where library can find a place into those missing spaces so that is another another important aspect we have to understand that uh, whatever gaps being available in the library in, in the education uh, area our our library can feel uh, able to fill or provide any assistant into those those uh, gaps where uh, library can help in uh, to the students and faculty member then what key trends we are expecting to uh, to accelerate the uh, technology adoption in the library over the next few years so we have to understand that what are the changes taking place what are the expectations from user based on user experiences and how we can accelerate the adoption of those technology uh, in coming days then finally what do we see as a significant challenge that we will uh, that will impede the technology adoption in the library over next few years so we have to understand that if are we uh, comfortable enough are we learned enough to find out the uh, proper solution using the technology we have to understand that how much we are comfortable with uh, those uh, technologies uh, which poses challenges among us uh, whether we are going to adopt those things or not so these are the uh, uh, four major questions uh, and all my presentation is i'm not going to very old uh, aspect of the technology application but which are the now upcoming technology which is going to be very useful uh, uh, though in india we are very uh, lagging behind in many of the technology application in the library but still uh, most of the thing, most of thing started happening uh, uh, maybe in a small uh, momentum but it is still uh, going on to the library so uh, these are the uh, i analyze these uh, uh, challenges in uh, three different uh, uh, parameters one the challenge which is uh, solve uh, we can solve very easily in a short term mid term or long term or uh, they are very difficult uh, to understand those technology either rethink the library rules or skills or competency then apply into the short term long term or mid term goals and uh, the technology which uh, cheat us or uh, uh, we uh, sometimes we make uh, we are not able to understand that whatever we are going to apply that is going to be successful uh, in in long term as well so managing obsolete knowledge so those those things are going to be a uh, uh, major role in the library major understanding about the technology and tools which is going to be used for for this and understanding about how far uh, we can implement these technology in a short term like in one year or two year uh, for example online services which is uh, one can understand the requirement and they can Uh, easily uh, apply those uh, information into a short term goals then uh, some um, uh, technology oriented information may be long mid term which may be uh, take 3 to 5 years of implementation like the information visualization aspect of technology implication then uh, maybe some information may more than 5 years or long term 
like machine learning and learn uh, uh, artificial intelligence all these things uh, can be applied into the uh, long term goal so uh, basic basis on uh, uh, these technology implicate implication in short term maybe uh, based on user experiences or based on requirement of the user like uh, having if user required uh, uh, online uh, information like ebooks we have to understand that we need immediate re, uh, implementation some information may be user may be required in mid term maybe uh, because of the change in uh, the policy because of the uh, understanding about the technology we we have a, uh, uh, some kind of consideration maybe financial constraint so we can plan it into uh, mid term maybe 3 to 5 years and some are actually required uh, long investment and long uh, duration and huge investment as well so those things we can uh, plan at, at a longer duration and uh, and for all these things in uh, thapar institute we have a, a very planned uh, 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 you can say uh, uh, our uh, director has given a chance uh, challenge i mean uh, challenge in the form of we have to design a sop how far we are going to apply this uh, different kind of technology into uh, short term mid term and long term scenario so we are developing our um, strategic plan and this strategic plan uh, we are going to implement in a different phases so some of them already we have applied which may i i, I will show in my slide so uh, the trends which the trends which is coming uh, the uh, into the library immediately which is related to uh, the embedding academic and research library into the curriculum because every time we are uh, our university curriculum is being modified based on the industry requirement based on the uh, skill development uh, required by the student while they are going to the industry or uh, job oriented activity which uh, our student uh, required when they are going uh, for a placement scenario so our curriculum is uh, very often keep on modification based on those things so understanding about how a uh, library can fit into the curriculum we have to understand that what kind of services what kind of resources and what kind of activity we should impart to our users so that we can fit into the curricula uh, of the institute so uh, academic curricula are now uh, designed based on outcome based learning the students are uh, 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 exposed to the uh, important task and they have to uh, produce the results based on their uh, learning and based on their uh, practical oriented uh, scenario so there is a need of library that library should require the resources which are very uh, suffice the users immediate need uh, uh, basically the curated content and now uh, there is a very very uh, big challenge in front of the librarian to provide information in a way most suitable curated mode because uh, internet is giving huge amount of information unless and until uh, and making a student aware that what kind of information actually useful for their content or useful for their curriculum is very very important so providing cur uh, curated content is is very good uh, uh, current trend is uh, happening into the library science and library field where you have to understand that what kind of uh, information what kind of content uh, faculty is going to include into the uh, uh, curriculum and then we can acquire those material for the library for the purpose of use by the students then uh, open access movement is very very uh, very fast and gaining momentum at very fast pace so a lot of information is now available into open access mode we have to understand that whether we are going to these uh, the, the to uh, provide those information which are available in uh, into open access mode or how useful they are understanding about the content understanding about the evolution uh, parameters understanding about the quality understanding about the feasibility accessibility all these things are going to be very very important Uh, for the purpose of adopting the uh, our role as a librarian and embedding the information into curriculum is going to be very very important so uh, we have started with um, uh, some kind of commercial software now we shifted to koha then we shifted to uh, institutional repository uh, koha for automation institutional repository like mera bola hai abhi chala jane ke liye bola hai kyunki sare din ajwa ji ka baat kar diya hai kyunki abhi sab mein spray karega are din dikha अभी स्टे कर रहा है ना तो ये बोलोगे हम लोग तो काम करना है अरे काम कैसे करोगे प्लीज म्यूट योरसेल्फ सो कोहा वी आर यूजिंग फॉर ऑटोमेशन दी स्पेस फॉर इंस्टीट्यूशनल रिपोजिटरी ई प्रिंट्स फॉर इंस्टीट्यूशनल रिपोजिटरी जूमला फॉर कंटेंट मैनेजमेंट सिस्टम सो ऑल दिस टेक्नोलॉजी नाउ हैव बीन ओवरपावर्ड विद समथिंग मोर व्हिच यूजर्स इज रिक्वायर्ड 
now uh, the koha is not only uh, remains the automation software but it has again the very uh, lot of uh, uh, newcomers which are developing koha into a different platform integrating a lot of in, uh, educational material into the koha so that a single it it also act like discovery services so people are embedding videos people are embedding ebooks people are embedding um, uh, sharing contents through ebook there are facility coming uh, coming up when students can can comment on the resource we uh, student can suggest the uh, resource available in the koha so that other people can choose those materials uh, while while they are browsing the catalog uh, using koha uh, koha uh, software further uh, this space is uh, also now uh, being modified into different aspects including uh, the statistics including the usage uh, records including the uh, how we are going to use this material as a uh, not only repository but uh, um, uh, it can be used as a learning content uh, learning uh, resource management software so uh, most of most of the content which are uh, con uh, created by online mart now uh, the institutions are using it as a repository for the not only the document but videos uh, contents ppt all these things are now uploaded as a learning system uh, into the koha recently the e prints has uh, um, uh, uh, e prints has modified uh, different uh, aspect of uh, uh, this uh, institution repository and e share uh, it share and uh, word share the content dm fix share all these technologies are uh, evolving uh, through the platform like ir so open educational resources there is a huge increase in the open educational resources uh, education resources because of the uh, this lockdown uh, scenario most of the things are now becoming online the teachers are taking their classes online mode and the students are attending to a different platform using google uh, meet or zoom La, zoom or uh, uh, edx what what all this uh, online platform are helping student to connect their classes uh, uh, sitting at different locations in this scenario open education resources again going to uh, play an important role because library is closed we are not able to uh, share the physical books but we are uh, looking at the information which can be available to the student Uh, which are available in open education resources and that can be included and then can be made a part of our uh, educational curricula and uh, e evaluation of such kind of educational resources which is available in uh, free openly uh, in the form of media digital set and other uh, teach, uh, teaching and learning uh, materials that can be uh, that can be used for the purpose of teaching too. so managing such kind of resources is big challenge in front of us so it share has come up with a technology where you can exclusively use uh, educational materials to uh, to host on a ed uh, share platform uh, similarly uh, oclc uh, uh, oclc platform also gi uh, giving a very nice uh, platform where you can uh, share the educational resources or educational material created by your faculty if your faculty is creating for example uh, we are going to host uh, uh, our e print uh, institutional repository software as a learning management ship, uh, system so where uh, our faculty has already started creating their video content they are starting their uh, ppts they are started uh, quizzes all these things are uh, being created by faculty members so we have a plan maybe in a few days we are going to host all the materials in a most classified way so that we can it can be made available 24/7 to the students so ed share is another development from e prints uh, uh, e print platform where all the educational materials can be uh, can be managed most effective way for example this is uh, already live now uh, like university of southampton they have developed uh, 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 they are managing their uh, class notes into the form of uh, through this uh, ed share platform then open access publishing is another uh, uh, change drastic change happening into the market uh, in publishing industry so most of the uh, people now uh, they wanted have uh, they wanted to have a uh, impactful research so publishers have uh, coming different kind of options where the people can publish their uh, material into gold open green open hybrid bronze diamond and black all kind of publishing trends have already taken place uh, and happening into uh, into the market at very fast uh, pace so uh, then uh, how to manage those things so folio is another uh, technology which is going to come up and already uh, it has already uh, came but the adaptation is now people have started uh, adopting the folio the folio is basically the future of uh, 
of library is open where uh, the open source uh, the projects are there the uh, we are um, reimagining the library software into in new collaborations and developing with, uh, with the developers and vendors so the traditional library is now uh, moving into the new paradigm and where the app based learning open platform and the libraries are having more choice to deliver the information to the user like sir was telling about how the document delivery services have uh, changes from so earlier we have a, a physical document uh, delivery services now it has transferred into the online de uh, document delivery services so folio is going to be another uh, game changer technology for the purpose of library then uh, use of mobile uh, technology is gaining a very fast uh, 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 change into the content delivery mechanism so uh, we have to understand that how to uh, prioritize the uh, content delivery through mobile phones so mobile technology is one of the fastest de uh, developing technology uh, as compared to others so a lot of changes happening place the contents are available through mobile apps contents are available through uh, very fast mobile networks uh, now we are talking uh, we are in the 4g era maybe uh, few days after we will be few few years after we will be in 5g so already the these have uh, been uh, practices and uh, the 5g technology maybe might be a, a reality into uh, coming years and then content delivery through uh, the mobile technology content delivery through apps and different kind of services which we are going to deliver through mobile apps what kind of service uh, facility we are going to provide through mobile app is gaining momentum uh, due to the due to due to uh, the advancement in technology uh, related to the member the digital transformation is taking a very high uh, speed so when we have to uh, when we are going to uh, adapt these mobile technology we have to understand that all the content which are available on uh, online mart must be uh, comfortable with uh, all uh, uh, digital platform like uh, we are using uh, many people using laptop many people are using mobile many people are using uh, tab and also now the uh, people are using smart watches so we have to understand that how these uh, changing uh, uh, platform and changing screen can uh, provide the information to the uh, users so responsive websites are coming up mobile friendly websites are coming up qr code based access is coming up sms alerts are very common now so these are uh, up now the whatsapp has been included, uh, included into the different kind of content delivery mechanism so all these are uh, digital transformations are happening very fast space and we have to understand that how far we can adopt these changing technology mobile technology especially delivering the information to the user so for example one of the uh, app known as researcher if you download this uh, uh, this uh, app in your mobile phone you can you are going to access more than 20000 journals uh, in your lab, in your uh, mobile app so these mobile apps uh, these uh, uh, this app researcher app gives the full content of the uh, 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 journals on your mobile and you can create use lot of facility available in in this researcher app in terms of content delivery in terms of notification in terms of uh, uh, downloading article reading article and all all these facilities are available uh, in, and if you are subscribing these contents in your uh, in your mobile or if you are having remote access all these things so remote access is another game changing uh, applications which is very very useful in in current pandemic scenario where you are extending your library services into uh, the people we are our researcher and faculty we are off campus and they are not in your uh, not using in the ips but they can even though they can access the content uh, sitting outside the campus and sitting from home they can access the content uh, using those remote x technology rfid is again uh, now uh, change it was uh, came up as a game changer in the library but now beyond that we are going to uh, see the changing uh, scenario using rfid so RFID is not only the uh, uh, library management uh, material movement system, but it is uh, coming up beyond more that you can monitor the uh, library, you can uh, uh, change the customer experience, you can uh, improve the workflow, uh, workflow management, you can uh, go for the inventory collection management solution. So uh, single card can help you a lot of activity related to the library. You can manage your user when it is coming to library, when he is leaving to library, what kind of material he has used, when he has used, 
what uh, problem he has faced all the things are going to be recorded into the rfid chip and uh, that all real time information are available into the into the library so if you are using gis if you are uh, gps mapping so immediately the people can uh, use app and they can reach to the resource within uh, within few seconds and uh, retrieve the document from there you can manage the inventory using uh, handheld devices where you uh, need not to go through all the bus within a swipe of uh, the uh, time you can access resources you can find out the what what kind of books are available at where, uh, which place and then again another um, uh, uh, improvement in rfid is uh, having what kind of information the actually people are looking from the library so uh, there is a web qs where you can find out what people are searching what kind of uh, whether they are able to find information or not all these things are very very uh, minutely recorded and we can take a, a major decision on implementing uh, or changing the service model in uh, using the rfid system the trend is also changing the technology is also coming where you are moving from uh, printed record to digital this is very very uh, uh, transformative most of the publisher now have stopped publishing their journals into print form so they are only coming into the uh, uh, it, digital format only the pick books print on demand mode not uh, on and uh, as when and required so we have to understand that how uh, we are replacing uh, the printed record into the digital the technology has changing very fast in publication industry we are going towards not only information management also the research data inform uh, research data management work so uh, students working in the lab they are uh, experimenting they are testing simulation data all kind of uh, information are being recorded and uh, uh, from print record into converted to digital record using a different metadata student portfolio Uh, shared data video all these things are now becoming a part and parcel of the uh, library and we have to think about how to manage these uh, data research data into a comprehensive platform so that it can be accessible as and when required so the uh, another technology uh, uh, like research data management where the data generated through lab experiment where uh, the research, uh, uh, generated through different research cycle can be easily disseminated and archived with the giving the valuable results so we have to understand there is a fixed share uh, uh, database which group, uh, provide a lot of information related to how to manage research data where we can create organize keep and file and then uh, then share with the collaborators for more publishing and getting cited so this is how uh, research data management uh, uh, activity is changing at very fast so earlier uh, we don't understand that we can manage the excel sheet as well but now it is happening because of the research data management activity big data is another uh, big challenge in front of the library i don't know how uh, uh, many people or how many libraries in india are working on managing the big data but there are a big progress is coming up so all the data which is generated by different activities said they are being managed by different uh, tools like python programming or Uh, for all all kind of uh, uh, data analysis is being taken place so now uh, the current scenario is data oriented uh, scenario and we have to understand that how we can implement this for the be uh, better customer reach better connection to the community create personal and user experience and then offering content to the uh, content and resources to the individual uh, as and when they required so big data is going to be another big uh, challenge and also the management of information using big data uh, is is the future of the library then uh, uh, discovery services is another technology which is going to uh, change the way the people uh, look for the information so uh, web scale discovery which gives the index based uh, information and all the information available into from from your uh, catalog from your digital from the uh, website digital institution repository e journal reference sources all these things are integrated at one platform in the form of books full text images video news dds interlibrary loan all these things are now uh, becoming possible day by day and the discovery services are uh, becoming more robust Uh, where we can uh, provide so now uh, the discovery services is going to be a very very uh, uh, important aspect for the each and library because we are investing huge amount of money for the subscription of uh, 
uh, electronic resources. Only thing is, uh, we have to uh, provide a suitable platform so that those resources can be uh, uh, utilized in an effective way. So discovery is one of the uh, best technology which is going to be help in uh, uh, in achieving the return uh, return on investment of the library. So for example, uh, this is Abisco discovery services we are using, and we uh, can find out that all the books related to full text form, books, e-journals videos, uh, photographs, news items, everything is available at single platform. So uh, whatever you uh, uh, say, all these things are available in uh, discovery platform. So uh, the user have a better experiences about uh, retrieving the information rather than going individual platform of IEEE, Sign Direct, Ibisco, everything. But all the information are available at single platform access. Then trends is coming up into the active learning classroom. So many, many, uh, many spaces uh, in the library and otherwise the classrooms are now uh, incorporated with active learning. So active learning is supported by uh, spaces that are designed to support teaching and learning in an atmosphere conducive to engage student activity in their own learning. So a uh, lot of makers space concept has been coming up where uh, libraries are providing a dedicated space where students, whatever they are learning into the classroom, they can experiment into the learning space, uh, into the maker space is a real time. So resources are there, services are there, facilities are there, and they can experiment it uh, out of the class when they are uh, finished with those uh, those classes and come to the library or come to the maker space uh, dedicatedly having a facility like uh, uh, 3D printers, laser cutters, CNC machines, soldering iron, and even uh, saving machines. So it depends upon what kind of services you want to provide into maker space. So you can. So this is what uh, 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 TIET is having. So our students are having full range of activity space where they can go for robotics, they can design circuits, they can go for some kind of uh, instrument uh, uh, creation. So all these facility we are providing at uh, maker space in the library. There uh, we can also uh, motivate the students to go for uh, active learning so some if we are a public library if you are a, a children specific library we can think of uh, providing a space for student creativity uh, maybe coding programming computer science video production all all kind of activity is possible into the makers space so active learning classroom uh, in uh, leverage with blended learning that is where uh, the spaces that are designed to support teaching and learning in a uh, engaging the student with their own learning having uh, uh, both digital as well as uh, a physical presence along with your teacher. So blended learning is that approach to education where combine online education material as well as opportunity to interact with the traditional uh, place space based learning uh, classroom method. So uh, your teacher is there, your uh, fellow colleagues are there, you have a digital resources, we have a maker space, we have digital content, everything is available at one place and you can learn while you are enjoying the, the uh, material, enjoying the environment. So they can uh, learn at your own play. Uh, students can learn on their own pace. So that is going to be very, very important uh, considering the three factor, three P's like place, path and piece. So these, these things are going to be very, very uh, practical in terms of blended learning. And the role of the library is going to be important to provide such information uh, which is helpful in blended learning. Google is uh, hugely transformed into its services. So it is not only search engine, but it is uh, leveraged with a lot of facility uh, uh, for the purpose of teaching and learning. So uh, Google Classroom is having a lot of information which can a faculty member can easily uh, imbibe into their online classes. So you can do the Google search, you can find out the books at one place, you can store your material into cloud storage, you can invite uh, your student through Google Meet, you can record the classroom's uh, lectures, you can put these materials on Google site, and furthermore, you can enhance the research productivity through Google Scholar. All these information are available uh, at one platform using your mobile devices or computer devices. So this is how fast technology is changing and you are having all the information available at one place. For example, Google Scholar, now the library have to think about how we can uh, embed our subscribed resources into the Google Scholar. 
so we have already uh, uh, talked with the uh, many publishers and our all uh, uh, resource material subscribed by the library is now accessible through google scholar so whoever is searching google scholar they can easily find out that access availability at tiit so it is very very clear link that we have subscribed this material and it is available online through google scholar just in one click you can download the material uh, for your teaching and learning and this is also once you activate it it can be accessible outside the campus as well information visualization is another trend which is coming uh, into the live pictures where uh, the uh, information are presented in a uh, computer supported interactive visual presentation uh, of abstract of the data to amplify the recognition so information visualization allows user to extract data from large databases in an efficient and effective way so you have seen that earlier we used to use keyword searching we have to use uh, different other methodology to uh, extract information but now uh, the uh, technology is coming up when you can visualize you can uh, the information can be extracted uh, through visualization uh, techniques so using concept map using mind map all the information can be extracted uh, using visualization tricks so this is how a uh, visualization uh, 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 represent a data so anyone having interest in science they can understand that how this technology is associated with the different other uh, uh, subject or other uh, areas where uh, we can extract the information actually this is going to be helpful in uh, uh, when you are going to conduct a research this visualization is going to help you to uh, frame your problem so you can understand that uh, how one subject is prolificating to other subject and what kind of application one can find out using different uh, kind of information nodes so uh, using concept map you can understand that how one subject is uh, uh, connected with the other subject and is there any kind of uh, connection exist or any kind of data exist any kind of resource material exist and using that uh, can you uh, design your problem or can you can you frame a research question so that you can proceed with your exam so concept map is going to help you to extract information related to the research question similarly a uh, mind map is going to be help you to uh, find out uh, how you are going to conduct the research out uh, research activity uh, as you proceed with further so you frame a mind you started uh, linking one concept to other and try to find out whether you are going to right path or not so uh, leveraging with the uh, mind map you can uh, extract the information you can connect your faculty member or uh, you can assess the progress of the report how you are going to understand that whether you are going to uh, going on a, on a correct uh, correct path or you need to uh, change your so mind map is going to help you in that and uh, if library is adopting then uh, you can uh, leverage with the information resources at each, each and every step so that the student and uh, faculty can be aware that these are the information uh, are available in my research area so keep on linking node by node keep on uh, integrating the resources so it will be going to help you uh, quickly help you to retrieve the information in in using these network analysis then user experience is another uh, very uh, good example and very fast changing uh, thing is going to happen in the library as well so uh, generally we look for uh, any information we immediately navigate to other so understanding about how fast the people are uh, navigating from one path to other path is very very important to us so if we, any user coming to uh, any digital library platform we have to understand that how how uh, much time he is devoting to uh, research uh, information or to find out a relevant information whether he is able to find out the relevant information or not so user experience is actually going to help to retrieve the information through discovery environment or single search tool or responsive visual design so all these are going to helpful in in Uh, in uh, assessing the user experiences and then modifying the uh, uh, our services or adopting the technology whether we are going to use one uh, technology or we are going to shift to any other uh, other technology based on the user experience then publishing trends is also moving way at very fast pace so we have a print book e book now we are going to have audio books so once uh, earlier the print book was uh, much popular in demand Uh, later on it was substituted by ebooks so though ebooks uh, was started in 1930s but popularity only gain in 1990s only 
where uh, most of the uh, uh, contents are now started uh, becoming available on the uh, digital platform and in indian scenario the uh, only uh, we got ebooks adoption is uh, only after uh, 2008 once amazon kindle uh, started delivering the content uh, in through kindle devices so uh, most of the ebooks the uh, maybe students not comfortable with the print books they go for the digital content as well so this is how ebooks uh, acquisition has uh, started using uh, in case of indian scenario where uh, maybe by 2024 we can going to have 1.23 million users having the ebook uh, ebook usage then uh, by age most of the uh, people uh, in age group 25 to 34 they are more preferred to use ebooks rather than print books then uh, there is a huge increase in uh, rise in kindle uh, sales in 2017-18 more than 80 percent hike has been noticed where uh, the kindle books kindle devices has been uh, purchased by indian uh, people to read ebooks through uh, kindle and using ebooks for the purpose of uh, academic and teaching so likewise we have also started acquiring uh, we have uh, around a dozen uh, uh, about 10 kindles and uh, we just experimented that how much people are comfortable with uh, the kindle reader so we have also acquired some kindle readers so that we can uh, distribute among the student today so uh, and this, uh, at the same time we have started acquiring the kindle uh, format books and people can start uh, using those uh, books through kindle devices virtual tour is uh, going to be a reality where uh, anybody can understand that what kind of space the library has we can provide the live locations space management furniture design collections even live feeds can be made available through virtual tour where students can easily understand that whether he has or she has the live space in the library to sit there or whether uh, the material which uh, they have requested is now which uh, is available at which place which place so virtual uh, tour and virtual reality is going to play an important role digital is uh, digital scholarship is uh, changing at very fast uh, pace where uh, our uh, materials are uh, we have to understand that how they are uh, available into the copyright stream how these are curated and uh, whether these are available in uh, digital repository whether are available in open access research data so all these are forming the digital scholarship so uh, most of the un unless and until we are not uh, thinking about these aspects we have uh, we cannot provide the transformational library services to the user so understanding about digital scholarship is very very essential uh, for uh, uh, for providing an effective information service and this is now becoming reality as well so we have to understand that uh, as fast as we can apply these things into our library setting we are going to sustain into the otherwise the user's interest is going to be lost because of the non availability of information as they wish and they desire so uh, uh, because students are very keen uh, working in group they need the information in collaborative they need information into multidisciplinary they have to uh, understand that how data visualization uh, what are the data visualization tools are available how to process those data and all the things are very very essential into the a uh, digital uh, scholarship where the people can find store organize annotate cite archive and reflect all these are the part of scholarship so uh, at the same time we have to understand that how we are going to market these materials market these services to the students so digital scholarship is going to, um another another five slides yeah so internet of things is going to be uh, very crucial because it is changing uh, it is acquiring the space very fast so a lot of sensors are being used to provide information to connect the different instrument like uh, fan fridge acs all these things are uh, going to be connected through uh, internet of things so uh, we have to understand that are we are going to use this technology into the library setting so uh, some of this activity we are uh, already adopted using our uh, wifi so student can easily uh, using our rfid and they can stu student can walk in anywhere any our library and we are trying to understand that whether our library space is being utilized through these things or not so uh, device monitor furniture movement student memory visitor counts all all these facilities are possible through internet of things use of uh, robotics artificial intelligence is gaining momentum 
so uh, i don't know how uh, it is going to uh, capture indian market but still it is started coming into the international libraries where uh, the robots are helping in searching sorting catalog assistant all these things are uh, started coming into the library chatbot is going to be a most common frequency where it is going to replace human intervention in uh, providing basic information through websites where they can um, give the relevant information on the uh, library related to simple request which student pays through website so this is now uh, becoming reality artificial intelligence based content development so there is a one um, product technology known as raxter rax so this is a, this technology is going to help you to uh, uh, write literature write a paper and uh, this is going to help you to identify the relevant content even into the uh, even on the word level so rexer is going to this is uh, augmented the content based on your concept you are going to put into the paper so likewise if you are working it can provide dictionary you can word meaning wikipedia scholarly content even it can suggest that this concept is not related to uh, not related here you can add different content there so likewise the contents are available there to 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 uh, add value into the your paper drones are being used uh, into the library for uh, delivery services like amazon uh, have already started doing uh, picking and dropping of the uh, material through drones this is happening augmented reality is uh, happening now though you can provide a lot of uh, creativity uh, using the computer generated image into the different kind of activity the students are uh, now more fascinated towards the virtual reality they can use 3d movies yeah, they can find out the uh, that create environment drawing the people and finding out the different kind of uh, spherical information in 360 degree and they can they, now these things are becoming reality into the so most of the people use uh, games related in this uh, activity are happening into the uh, virtual reality now so learning common is now becoming most common we are going to uh, this is what uh, we are going to long term planning where we have to think about how we are going to organize our library space so earlier we are very uh, uh, silent zone but now it is have become a crowded space so uh, people are free to move and uh, they can uh, sit anywhere they can work in their project they can uh, um, uh, join their uh, colleagues to work in the uh, into a specialized study experiences research common is now gaining momentum where uh, serious uh, student can come they are equipped with different kind of equipments materials software tools and they can uh, concentrate on their research activity through presentations and discussion with their research faculty all these things are uh, now happening in the library so we have also a research common space in our library we have dedicated uh, uh, space where student can uh, come they write thesis they can discuss with the faculty they can make presentations they can uh, even library people are there to assist them through research consultation activity so this is how uh, the transformation and technology use is coming up in the library so this things uh, pages some kind of challenges among the library one thing is literacy then uh, different kind of services are there numbers are there how capable of uh, uh, we are using ict then thinking personal and social capability ethical understanding intellectual understanding all these things are uh, challenges uh, going to be uh, faced uh, by the librarians or faculty or students uh, while Uh, working the, the using these technologies we have to understand that uh, continuous skill development is going to be essential uh, for librarian as well as uh, faculty and students so that we can impart right in, uh, type of uh, information to the uh, changing technology uh, scenario for library uh, library professionals understanding about the trends understanding about the uh, skills required for the uh, changing trends so adaptations and implementations are some of the essential uh, skills that need to be understood by uh, the librarians and then they should acquire the equip themselves to adapt those things uh, in changing scenario so uh, in nutshell so I'm, i i can say that library is growing in terms of resources services and technology so we have to understand that uh, the ragnathan principle it is a growing organism so everything is changing at Uh, its pace and we have to understand that what kind of technology we are going to use understanding about the need uh, understanding about the assi um, um, assessment assessment models 
we have to understand that what kind of technology we are going to what we needed and what we are going to uh, implement it that is most important uh, important then implementation of these technologies uh, another aspect based on your funding based on your requirement based on your assessment you can implement those things and then uh, skill enhancement enhancement is another important aspect so to use these kind of technologies and adapt those things so that we can provide uh, uh, services to the users so this is what uh, i was uh, trying to uh, i convey this message and i know uh, i cannot replace professor lakshman rao but uh, this is uh, uh, i want to say thank you sir over to professor nath yeah very thought provoking lecture <laughs> actually lots of things are to be there to be understandable by us so those who are interested have some question please put in the chat a very brief way uh, dr rama brother sriram will be there with us even after that also right. but now we'll switch over to the second person please be with us dr ram uh, we can pass sure. on and in the meantime i request the audience to put their question i have collected already some of their questions we'll put them will uh, dr ram will be with us to answer these questions but in the meantime i'll request our second person uh, 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 dr rafar sume uh, he is the deputy university librarian of uh, nehu and he is also in uh, former information scientist he has played a great role in implementing the ict devices in their in his library including arab hadi he has used koha in their library and he is also uh, work as a counselor or a guide to number of libraries to implement different ict devices we are happy that dr sumer is with us and sumer will speak on the area that dr sriram has discussed of course uh, he will be coping with this uh, uh, please dr sumer dr sumer is here Dr. Sumer, uh, yes, just now he informed. Me. Yes, please. If please go on, sir. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, please take care so, of us. Uh, yes. You are getting okay. some problem in connection. So uh, it's okay, sir. It's it's working. You go. You go. So it, thank you for it, coming over here and uh, to okay. talk to the people to us. thank you thank you very much uh, sir uh, it's a privilege to be a part of this uh, webinar uh, conducted by icleek uh, under your leadership and uh, i'm also thankful to uh, <coughs> the other uh, members of uh, icleek who had uh, coordinated this program well to ensure that uh, we are able to kick start uh, today uh, the first session of uh, just come gori he is not seen by us gori you please take care he is not seen by us is he visible by you hello yeah hello still you are not visible by us i don't know why please yes, go on we we are listening to you You're, okay you, okay you please video you please put so, the uh, have you put video on yeah yeah i put i don't know why it is not coming can you hear me sir i can hear but i have not seen you Okay, <laughs> so can I continue? Uh, just uh, one minute. Uh, Gauri is taking care of this thing. Gauri Shankar Karmagar. Okay, okay. One minute, one minute, please. Uh, you are not. You are not visible. I have. your uh, video is on no your video is on sumer in your system video is on 
Yes, sir. Yes. You have not Please seen... on your video and co continue your speaking. Uh, yeah, he cannot on his video. I don't know why. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? We are hearing you. Just it, yeah. Now you are able. Go on. <laughs> yes. Yes, sir. Very good. Okay. Okay. Sorry. These are okay. Uh, uh, very good. Okay. Very good afternoon uh, to you and the team. And uh, despite uh, <clears throat> these difficult times, I joined uh, Dr. Sri Ram. Uh, to uh, condole, you know, the death of uh, Professor Lakshman Rao's younger brother. And because of that, unfortunately, he's not in a position to be with us this afternoon. In fact, uh, I'm grateful to other members also of ISLIC who had played a supportive role to ensure that uh, we able to start this series successfully. And as we go through these difficult times, of our lives, it would indeed be helpful to us to retrospect about the present physical library systems as pressure mounts to shift towards the e-environment. In fact, it is the understanding of the present and the use of technology that will enable us to make a smooth transition to a virtual environment. Uh, libraries in general have been influenced by the application of innovative technology. In fact, uh, the NMC Horizon report summary 2017 suggests that in the very near future, we will be seeing libraries adapting to accommodate new applications of technology for learning, research, and information. <laughs> It's true to the current trend that academic libraries have been able to adapt innovative ideas and new technology in order to support teaching, research, and promote learning. The present proliferation of web based applications and other educational institutions to cross borders to confirm and collect. नहीं <laughs> so actually your audio is muted so please unmute yourself sir Can you hear me now? Yes. yes. Can you hear me? Yeah, we are hearing you. Go okay. On. Okay. So uh, the present trend of library automation uh, <coughs> talks about the uh, application of uh, computers in a ne network environment to perform and have been performing traditional activities in acquisition, cataloging, circulation, serial control, stock verification, so on and so forth. In fact, it's a process <coughs> whereby uh, data and information is being collected. There's a storage, processing, and retrieval of library-based information. The trend is, as per objectives of library automation, 
the present applications of technologies is to improve the level of services and quality in the library and of course to fulfill the needs and achieve uh, which was difficult by the manual system to affect to effectively effectively share the resources among libraries in the region and uh, to have an entire control of the entire operation of course trend of the application of li of library automation and specific technologies in this aspect is to generate a union catalog which had become a very important tool for the library professional and its users there's also a need to ensure that uh, technologies are being uh, are being uh, adopted by uh, by libraries uh, due to an increase in the operational in the efficiencies of its staff to improve the quality speed and effectiveness of service and to provide access to remote users including sharing of resources on a network ability to manage the physical and financial resources and wider dissemination So his audio is not coming, sir. Yeah, can you hear me? Partly. Can you hear me now? Sometimes it goes out, but ultimately okay. we are hearing. Okay, okay. So uh, another advantage is of the present trend of uh, application of library uh, technologies is there had been uh, you know it has been a cost-effective solution. especially uh saving on the resources like labor and of course we have seen the speed and efficiency in the operations and maintaining accuracy in the entire process now uh, the components uh, which uh, play a vital role and uh, still remains the presence friends uh in the indian university libraries is the application of <clears throat> library automation softwares at present there's a huge uh you know movement towards adoption of open source softwares uh, like koha and there's a shift from proprietary softwares like lipsys and vtls products uh towards open source environments uh predominantly koha for managing their library automation environment and uh, in the process especially 
when it comes to the amount of resources that is required to maintain them. We have seen, and everybody <coughs> is aware that uh, the free license, the GNU general public license, the Creative Commons license, and so on and so forth, have been adapted very well in library systems, considering the philosophy that they support to the environment, such as uh, a library. The pros or advantages of such environment is that of the security that uh, they uh, offer, the affordability, the transparency, perpetuity, and the interoperability that uh, these softwares or platforms uh, support in terms of standard MARC formats, Dublin Core, Z39.5 for interoperability or interchange of data, and uh, the OAI PMH uh, metadata uh, standards. Of course, the flexibility that it off offers and the localization in particular to specific libraries in specific locations uh, in the country. We have seen that uh, <coughs> the only disadvantages of The only, the only disadvantage uh, that these environments, uh, such as open source environments that uh, most of the libraries and professionals perhaps who are working with it have experienced is the support. Understanding that <coughs> the support is either community based, you can get support from uh, the community website, you can get support from your <coughs> colleagues or your professionals who are working on this, but the sound basis that it keeps the profession alive, it keeps the profession in a mode to update <coughs> their skill sets, it keeps the profession to keep learning, is what the advantages uh, outweighs the disadvantages of open source software. Uh, we have seen that. Uh, It's been, it's been the more than 20 years now, and Poha entered its 20th version, in fact, on the 1st of June 2020, and it has, uh, you know, grown throughout its long journey, way back when its first installation went live in January 2000. So it had been, you know, a stable system for adoption by libraries. In fact, uh, the various facilities or features that it provides uh, through its uh, librarian's interface or through its uh, user interface is of its uh, You also have uh, uh, features like uh, a union catalog facility, which is uh, an important uh, feature, considering that it's available uh, you know, at a nominal fee or free of course, and of course the customizable search uh, that a library can adapt to. 
non line circulation and barcode generation and uh, printing though there are other softwares that are available like new genlib evergreen and uh, perhaps the latest upgradation of uh, the software of uh, university libraries by inflipnet but uh, these they become stable in order to be uh, productive and uh, helpful for the university uh, library another advantage is <clears throat> there are other add-ons uh, that uh, you becomes that you can include which becomes compatible to uh, the software for which uh, you can use the g labels which is a, a free and open source software for generation of barcodes so uh, the trend uh presently in library is <clears throat> to keep on adapting and uh, growing in these systems so that uh, by usage they becomes uh stable and perhaps uh upgradation or uh moving into a better environment could be introduced uh in uh the years to come the <clears throat> another trend that uh, uh library has been adopting lately is the you know the the library security and surveillance systems here uh, we have seen the libraries using their electro electromagnetic tapes for uh, items which uh, are not in circulation and have been using the base cameras in order to to uh, establish a surveillance systems in a large university library and uh, would come in very handy especially as we open up to ensure that we adopt the new norms whereby social distancing is uh, essential even in a uh, library environment the ip cameras can be of different uh, types some of them can be box some can be dome so on support so forth and they could be terminal thermal or day and light cameras now the the other trends <coughs> the that uh, library is uh, adopting its uh, the use of rfid equipments uh, we have seen that uh, using rfid solutions uh, you can uh, manage uh, your shelves you can uh, do a self check in check out and in these difficult times you can have a book drop whereby uh, contactless uh delivery of uh, books or items in circulation could be done by uh, patrons uh 
uh, when we deliver the books to the library, then you also have this new normal is uh, the RFID environment which uh, we are uh, which uh, we are uh, adopting in the northeastern hill university is based on the the koha integrated library management systems and uh, through a middleware the other components are uh, uh, attached uh, for example there's a tagging station there's a, a self check in check in check out counter and there's a handheld reader and of course we have introduced uh, the uh, Cut, smart ID for a solution which could be used as a library card as well as uh, for recording the entry and exit of uh, library patents in the university and for other features that uh, this card is required in the university system. Now, uh, the trend uh, We have observed. We have observed that. Can we have observed that uh, uh, digitalization have increases uh, productivity and uh, efficiency in terms of library services. Yeah. Can you hear me, sir? Can you hear me? Sometimes uh, it's disturbing. Audio is very disturbing. Now we are now finishing. Audible, audible. Okay. Yeah. You are you are finishing or some no, like a... no, no. Oh, so okay. Uh, just uh, more slides. Some more. Yeah, please show the slides. So, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You may click from your answer. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, the the uh, most important trend that we have seen in the uh, libraries, uh, especially in a, a digital uh, library section, is the use of a special technology whereby uh, we were able to offer inclusive library services to those which are uh, uh, visually challenged. 
we have uh, incorporated a Lex Instant Reader and Scanner, for which uh, it is a technology where the scanner reads a printed book and it converts it into speech. And that speech could be or it again in his uh, uh, residence or his study area. So this has become uh, very helpful for, uh, for uh, uh, such visually challenged uh, users. It's, uh, it's a product which I feel uh, should be used uh, extensively because uh, it is cost effective. Perhaps it costs just around uh, 75,000 rupees and uh, doesn't need an annual maintenance cost to uh, maintain it. Now, uh, the digital library software, which uh, we are adopting at present, uh, follows the trend of most popular Uh, we are adopting a DSpace, which is a, a digital library software, uh, also meant to host institutional repository. And uh, it is a major software. It has been around for 20 years. And uh, we have seen how it has progressed from the versions that uh, it has uh, <coughs> started with way back in November 2002 till it's uh, DSpace version 7 beta 2, which uh, was released recently during the month of uh, uh, April. Understanding being a popular uh, digital library software, we have seen its wide adoption and uh, our present uh, national for uh, other uh, digital library softwares and uh, institutional, uh, institutional repository softwares uh, uh, are moving ahead. But we could see that uh, the stability that a software like DSpace have uh, shown for more than 20 years now is a fact to be understood, uh, to be com uh, contemplated, and fact to be studied so that uh, all the new features that are available now uh, with uh, happened in the near future. Uh, we also have uh, uh, seen that the trend is for libraries is to move to uh, content management uh, systems, uh, perhaps in the form of Moodle, Drupal, Joomla, uh, which are uh, 
uh, gaining popularity lately among libraries. It's just a matter of time for us librarians to test and experiment which one of these would be ideal for Users. We have seen that uh, uh, content management systems like Drupal are able to integrate the uh, OPAC, which are being popularly uh, hosted by Koha lately. So uh, the success of these content management systems is uh, how will they be able to embrace the existing online public access catalog that we librarians are so used to and have put in our times and effort and resources in order to establish over a period of time of course not to undermine the various uh, inviting features that uh, such content management systems provide. Not to undermine the, uh, the uh, advantages uh, and the rich features that the present day content, man content management systems provide to our users, whereby they permit the abil ability to constantly uh, connect users to the internet using their handheld devices, which have attracted them uh, in the use by our researchers and uh, library users in general. It's up to us librarians to explore them and uh, Drupal WordPress with the plugins have become uh, very fertile grounds for us libraries and librarians to venture with and uh, update our skills and uh, in order to uh, share our uh, library resources with our ever hungry library users. Yeah, the, the, uh, another, another trend that is uh, uh, picking up rapidly uh, among libraries lately is the use of discovery services. In fact, they are being classed as next generation catalogs and may replace our online public uh, access catalogs and uh, are used to uh, working modules of integrated library management systems. The discovery interface includes relevancy-based search results, faceted navigation, and other features consistent with web-based resources and these multiple areas of uh, functionality in the area of end-user interface, interoperability, ability to interact and co communicate with library, integrated library management systems, and uh, access to remote index platform by API, and uh, 
create an environment where it gives a one-stop shop solution to our library members. Interestingly, uh, we have seen that uh, In, interestingly, uh, interestingly, we have seen uh, there is a gaining of popularity of uh, open source uh, platforms like ViewFind, uh, which is uh, developed uh, by the Villanova University using PHP programming and Apache Solar indexing a search and retrieval technology. It is uh, uh, a popular library resource portal to be used by libraries for libraries. And uh, there's a likelihood that there's a prediction that perhaps they, it may replace our traditional OPACs and it can include our catalog records it can uh, locally cache you can showcase your digital you can showcase your digital library items it can be an institutional repository or an institutional bibliography and uh, being a modeler in nature, you can customize the modules to best fit your needs. The other uh, software uh, which have been a trend uh, lately, apart from uh, ViewFind, is the, the extensible catalog, which was la launched way back in 2006 by the River Campus Libraries of the University of Rock. Rochester with funding from the Andrew W. Mellon Foundation. And uh, it supports toolkits like OAI PMH as well as metadata services toolkits and uh, integration of The popularity of uh, discovery services uh, amongst libraries lately is because of its index-based discovery services. Now it includes a discovery interface with characteristics which provides central index populated by resources that represent the general body of content of interest to libraries. These indexes are massive and cover the body of academic library oriented content and uh, uh, our specific subset of content resources and services that are available in the web. The central index of these discoveries of The central index of uh, discovery services is uh, potentially generated from a variety of categories of content, which includes metadata and full text from commercial publishers, content from ANI resources, metadata and full text from open access repositories, metadata or full text from relevant institutional repositories, also bibliographic and holdings information from a library's resource management systems, materials from publishers, and uh, wherever there's a need to move content in bulk through some arranged technical and transfer mechanism. 
Dr. Sumer, how much time you require? Dr. Sumer, sorry. How much time you require more? Dr. Sumer? Your audio and video is very disturbing. I think because of Silong. Dr. Sumer? Do you hear me, Dr. Sumer? Yeah, I can hear you, sir. I'm continuing. You're, I can hear you, sir. I'm continuing. How much time you require more? Uh, it will take me just uh, 10 minutes more. Yeah, somewhat. Okay, then go ahead, please. Because we are getting disturbed over audio and video. I don't know why. Anyway, you go on, please. Okay. You go on, please. Okay. The, uh, the main, main product uh, that we have seen from uh, proprietary uh, based uh, uh, organizations when it comes to discovery services is uh, from EBSCO Discovery Service and of course someone from uh, ProQuest. We have also seen the discovery services from uh, OCLC through its world uh, CAT uh, interface. Uh, the advantage of uh, discovery services which have been uh, spelled out uh, by ProQuest Uh, works in conjunction with serial solution to provide links to ebooks, journal articles, audios, videos, library catalogs, institutional repository, lib guides, and uh, similar sources. The summon indexing plays a vital role. Uh, in order to satisfy a query uh, submitted by a user, whereby the summon uh, index enhanced direct linking uh, with The relevancy ranking provided by uh, by summons uh, belongs to which belongs to progress is uh, uh, have become effective when the evaluating on the relevancy ranking uh, displayed by uh, its results. Advantages of uh, the discovery services when compared to earlier federated search is that the search in discovery services is fast. It uses a standardized unified index. It's robust. Uh, enhancement of metadata is possible. It's comprehensive. Its performance is very high. And it can cover all subscriptions. The trend in the use of technologies when it comes to support uh, research lately is in the form of uh, facilitating open access uh, uh, publishing and uh, uh, retrieving of information. We have seen the Dr. Shri Kumar uh, presentation about uh, the various options that publishers now uh, provides uh, to libraries and uh, researchers 
uh, on the public publishing and open access mode and uh, uh, the uh, the advantages and the disadvantages that uh, extends to libraries and its users. The library consortia is uh, one technology which has been following a trend lately and have been uh, uh, successfully adopted by libraries uh, in our country and uh, across the globe, whereby we have seen the, the use of uh, uh, technologies facilitated by uh, uh, publishers where uh, libraries are able to access to huge amount of uh, key resources uh, that are being provided by scholarly publishers and in the process we libraries have been uh, able to maintain the trend of library services and share the resources uh, in quick response to users' demand. This is promoted in the library loan and uh, uh, a successful resource sharing environment. We should acknowledge uh, the UGC InfoNet uh, Digital Library Consortium coordinated by InfoNet on the UGC and MHRD for the support and the present issue of Sindhu uh, Consortium. Uh, the Deltcon Consortium from DBT, which has seen the, uh, a boost in ensuring that uh, such trends are being adopted by libraries in the country. What is most enlightening to see is because of this consortium, libraries are being uh, able to move ahead and subscribe resources on their own understanding. Uh, the success stories that have been written Lately, uh, during this uh, pandemic, we have seen that uh, because of uh, the consortia, uh, we are able to provide uh, remote access to our uh, uh, users, though they are remotely uh, located from uh, the uh, campus. They may be at home or in the respective uh, uh, locations, but they are able to uh, continue to read and learn and uh, uh, facilitate with their uh, research activities. Uh, we have So, okay, then we have seen the, the we have seen the, the use of uh, popular uh, remote access tools like uh, Shibolet, Open Athens, remote access, and uh, uh, similar applications which uh, are being uh, adopted by libraries uh, worldwide during this pandemic. Another uh, trend which are being followed by libraries is uh, the support uh, to researchers through uh, all metrics tools whereby citations could be tracked and index factor could be generated uh, 
using the popular tools uh, uh, developed We have seen that using uh, uh, IRENS, uh, we were able to integrate the existing research management systems, such, that, such as our human resource systems, course management systems, grant management systems, and institutional repository, other open and commercial citation database, and scholarly publishers, integrate academic identity like ORCID ID, Scopus ID, Research ID, the Microsoft Academic IDs, Google Scholarly ID, from various sources. Key features of uh, uh, IRENS is its discovery uh, services. faculty members in institutions. It permits faceted search facility with number of filters to find experts and uses API interface to import publications using academic identities and integrations of ORCID uh, to ingest the profile information along with publications. It generates uh, visualization effects in the form of graphical representations, uh, displaying productivity of departments and uh, individual faculty member. Overall, it displays the research output of an organized Other trends that the libraries have been adopting lately is uh, uh, with the use of uh, uh, reference referencing tools to support uh, uh, researchers, either Mendeley, Zotero, EndNote, and of course uh, to research to to support research in the form of uh, uh, promoting academic integrity and maintaining research ethics in the university systems by adoption of plagiarism detection softwares like uh, Urkund, Turnitin, and research uh, writing tools like Grammarly. Though uh, the uh, present system is uh, uh, May adopt uh, uh, the general trend lately uh, as uh, uh, stimulated by our users. It was seen that uh, there's a great shift uh, required requirement of libraries to move to social media platform, be it Facebook, WhatsApp, and other content management systems, uh, and predominantly the uh, dominance of YouTube. But uh, as librarians, we need to uh, ensure that uh, uh, these systems needs to be thoroughly understood uh, so that uh, uh, Managing our uh, uh, libraries and uh, extending our uh, services to the users so that the transition is smooth. Uh, whenever the we move. Woman, actually, your voice is not audible. You can sum up, actually, because people are saying. 
Okay. Uh, your voice is okay. not audible because of this actually. You can sum up. Okay, I'm signing up. Yeah. I'm signing up. Uh, one, uh, minute, one minute, we, please. We, uh, we, yeah. uh, we, we uh, visualize that uh, as we move into the future, uh, artificial intelligence will find a place uh, in the, the management and uh, extension of services of library. We could see uh, social media being integrated into the environment, of course, uh, big data and data analysis uh, that uh, uh, would form uh, the key activities of uh, future libraries. We do hope that uh, the national digital libraries uh, of India, which had invested uh, and which had played a dominant role, especially during this lockdown period, its role will extend, will extend to address these issues which are uh, stimulating libraries at uh, present. Oh, to conclude, I may sum up by saying that uh, uh, the final slide, sir, uh, the trend will move. Uh, to digital libraries due to show social distancing norms as users are restrained in visiting brick and mortar libraries. While e-learning and e-education is going to be the new norm, educational resources, e-educational resources, there's a strong likelihood that library resources will shift to e-format. AI, Internet of Things, and social media will play key roles in library services in the years to come. And what is challenging and exci exciting for libraries is uh, as we teach and learn, uh, we, are, we also need There's a need to collaborate across disciplines in order to understand uh, our users and be relevant and to add value to the entire profession. Thank you very much, sir. So, uh, thank you. Thank you, <laughs> Dr. Sumer. It's uh, in spite of your very, very sincere thoughts. You are getting some problem. We are also getting some problem. Uh, I think you'll be able to share your PPTs to our participants. Uh, we hope. So, yes, sir. Uh, Doctor. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, yeah, please. Doctor Ram uh, Sri Ram is there, no? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So most of the people are asking. I have gone through some of the questions, especially to about the skill development. Yeah. So how our library, you have told about necessity of the skill development of right. our library profession uh, to cope with the present situation. Uh, though you have uh, uh, hit the point, but did not explain much. But very briefly, uh, institution where people can get to develop their skill, where their present LIS school is sufficient, or even some libraries are taking care of libraries like you, your library has taken care of to some extent to develop the skill of the existing people and to be professional. Have you given some high gifts, uh, some brief account about this? Very brief, please. Okay. So, uh, skill development is basically, uh, it's not limited to one aspect, but it may be different, uh, depend upon the, what kind of uh, skills you required 
to tackle uh, 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 what kind of problem you are going to face like for example uh, now uh, today so uh, we need to uh, develop a skill to manage our uh, open educational resources so for that unless and until you have uh, inquisitive uh, mind you are not going to understand uh, so understanding about uh, the requirement uh, understanding about uh, the uh, 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 technology all these things are going to uh, going to uh, impact the skill requirement for the uh, professionals and uh, there is another aspect uh, like uh, so people are uh, specialized in a special kind of activity related to the library for example we at uh, tiit we are much focused about our research support services so that's what i uh, given in my biodata and you have read that so we are more focused about how we are going to enhance the research activity and how we are going to enhance the services which is going to help uh, our faculty members uh, in terms of uh, uh, enhancing their research uh, productivity in, in terms of so we are especially going to hire a person which is uh, uh, immersed with uh, Uh, different kind of research skills in terms of uh, citation in terms of uh, managing references in terms of uh, database searching all these are the skills that we need to uh, work upon us and try to find out how beautifully we are going to uh, uh, understand those techniques search techniques reference management uh, searching information uh, one to uh, we generally learn uh, run library liaison programs so that the purpose of that library liaison program is to connect uh, a, a, a department with the library what kind of resources we are having what kind of services we can impart how we are going to write uh, your uh, thesis how you are going to search the references all kind of uh, small small skills we have to develop ourselves and uh, then uh, then we can uh, uh, add on value to our services to which is going to helpful to the uh, research and student so likewise it's all depend upon what kind of skills one person is required to acquire and then try to find out the suitable uh, uh, platform where they can learn it uh, thank you very much uh, any specific question we have people like uh, uh, amitabh satarji sir or uh, dr mojit sir or you can conclude so thank you very much i'm very much thankful to the resource person to participant friends to senior colleagues i am thankful to dr rama sriram and uh, dr sumer and my medical support people dr gauri shankar karmakar we will have our next on 17th and you will be notified accordingly we will keep in touch with you dr locker can i dr locker can i say one word please Uh, hi rao please yeah, please sir is there dr locker yes please 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 uh, good evening to good evening to all of you i am my apologies most welcome most welcome lakshman rao yeah. uh, actually i was just trying to just answer a couple of questions that are being posed uh, like skill development first of, first of all our question is what skill do you want to teach there are two types of skill one is yes please you are not ready bro Lakshman, you are not audible. Yeah, you are visible, not audible. <laughs> I am trying to. Okay, now can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me, please? Yeah, now we are here. Yeah. We are talking that. Let me please. Hello. Ah. Uh, Can you hear me? We can hear you. Please go on. Hello. Yeah, we are here. You can, you can, we can hear you. Or you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Actually, when you say skill, there are two types of skill. One skill which is already developed, which is being practiced by others, and the second is the new one which is going to come up where we have to learn, practice it, and become master. So the in first case, if you go to a library like Sri Ram. Or uh, North East Delhi University, probably you will be able to learn. But the question is the second part, where you, if you want to learn something, now what is going to happen? How do you learn? It is actually what happens. Everything moves. It, nothing dumps. Dump, nothing is dumped from the 
sky. Everything slowly. For example, you take statistics. Our statistics were something different. Now, ultimately, where we have gone to altimetrics, you have a statistics of how many times the book is referred also. Right? Or, or the journal is referred. Journal is downloaded. So the, what is happening, it is a slow pace. Skill, it is slowly, it is becoming more mastery and more finishing touches. But only thing is, if you read, for example, when we were students, we never learned management, we never learned the technology. But today, we have learned it. So similarly, when we, we all, of, all of us, we talk about... Can you, hello? Yes, go uh, All of us talk about the Facebook. Why are you not talking about the uh, research gate? Why, when every time we are talking about Twitter, why are we not talking about, about academia.edu? What we call them as academic social networks, right? The the process is from social networks, the academic social networks have come. So therefore, it is not one or two. And the most important problem as on today is uh, the technology has come. I can give an example in the Indian Institute of Chemical Technology. The journals are two, um, two, two what you call halls. Now everything is available on net. So they say, what do we do with these uh, two halls of uh, journals? Is it, am I, am I, am I audible, please? Yeah, so now the question is, what do we do with these uh, print uh, journals, which are in thousands? So the question is, now the problem has come up is, what do you do with the space? Because we were having hundreds and thousands of journals. Now we don't need that shelf. So now the question is that things are changing in libraries. First of all, when we talk about the space, the new trend, what we want is you have a, a, a place where team can sit with a computer facility and net facility so that they can sit and do something like a teamwork. This is exactly what we are talking about, uh, space management. And similarly, when uh, you, you talk about the, uh, um, like, you know, when we are talking about the data, you know, there is a two concepts have come, big data and also research data management. So there are two concepts are coming. They are, they are not something which has fallen somewhere. If you slowly learn, everything comes. So skill, I think it is not a difficult, but only thing is skill is essential to, so that your service will be up to mark. And similarly, when you look into uh, other things, now the question is we, earlier we were putting in the journal or bookshelves or written with the pen, something like you know, what we call a shelf, shelf guide. Now today they have changed the shelf guide. Now, people are trying to uh, put digital displays. See, this is what is the change. Digital display we see in the railway station, the bus station, we see everywhere. Now, they have been shifted to the libraries also. Similarly, we are able to talk about the cloud, cloud computing. And what we need is we need to learn how to make use. That's it. Every, everything the, the vendor will be able to take care of that. So the question is, is it difficult for us? I say the younger generation with the age of two or three, when they're able to operate the mobiles, which is nothing but technology, is it is it difficult for us, knowing a lot of technology, is it difficult for us to opt to the new technology? This is a major question. And also there is another, like, you know, for example, another development is one, one card, which will be useful in the hostel, which will be useful for scholarship, which will be useful for the library. So what is happening? One card is used at multiple places. So what is happening every day we are able to find earlier as we were talking about as just now Sumir was talking uh, one database now then we have come to discovery right and when we were students we were saying you know you learn uh, uh, foreign language i said why because uh, you learn foreign language you get a job today automated translation automated indexing all these things we are able to learn from last two to three decades so there is uh, the question is technology is move, moving forward and it is not moving forward because of just because it is developed. When we learn, the actually, if you remember Ranganathan's spiral, spiral of scientific method, when we use, you find the problem, you try to solve the problem, you get a new, a new concept, new idea, then the problem, I'm sure all of you know spiral of uh, scientific method. Hello? Yes, yes. So the spiral of scientific method, Dr. Ranganathan in those years, about six decades ago, he always said, you know, how do you new things come? Similarly, the technology also people are using. They are able to find a new asset, new, new concept. Yeah. They are able to uh, identify new problems. And that is how new things are coming in. 
and that is how today somebody was writing you no know, mark already it is gone and now there is there in in just a few years we will not talk about the mark similarly there are lot of things like sdi it was a hot subject in those days when i was a student now who talks about sdi who talks about cas because everything is available on the table of the user and he himself is searching so the question is what is new i say that nothing is new it is only a process of development that new things are coming in new things as, as we all learn new things are coming because of new application new inputs new procedures all this is all we learn in research methodology so this is also same thing and i am sure nothing is difficult for our libraries because they are, they are able to handle hundreds and thousands of people and are able to handle hundreds and thousands of books and learn the knowledge are able to give the service so therefore librarians if they want it's not difficult but my last only submission is we are here only to make use of the technology we are not we are not going to be screw driver uh, screw driver using the screw driver for the technology like you know you buy a, a tv you we are not going to uh, use the repairing we all only know how to make use of the tv that's it so similarly everybody says you learn this software you learn that software i am not in favor of learning the software of every software somebody develop a software make use of that software that is what we need to know otherwise we will forget about our our own services and then we talk about the software then what software people will do they have to they have to cry so therefore we know we should know where we limit we should know what we have to do i think the uh, i know it is a last minute but uh, i i can only say as I, as our friends were saying you now artificial intelligence has already entered into library systems and uh, now we ndli we are talking about ndl a digital library i wanted to tell you this is the basis the basis for this is uh, digital public library of america the resources are different places linking and providing what you are able to see is they are able to harvest the institutional repositories from all over the country and different databases and uh, i mean different libraries and they are able to provide they are not doing anything except harvesting but same way we are also talking about the you know, development when you take up the copyright when we went for the digital rights management so therefore what i would like to say is uh, there is nothing our people can learn uh, as, as sri ram was saying skill is very important i also appreciate skill is very important skill skill gives to helps you to become more perfect skill helps you to uh, become uh, provide a better service this is what i wanted to say i'm sorry last minute i just you know entered uh, through my mobile i i don't have a pad, laptop also uh, i think that is what i wanted to say thank you very much uh thank you professor lakshman rao i already this is stated as concluding mark remark from you we will appreciate the way you are talking to us and uh, really you are a, a, shown a, a, as a good professional in us it's example for us with this i conclude thank you very much thank you all to see you thank you thank you. thank you thank you sir thank you very much thank you sir Thank you, very much. <laughs> Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sir, uh, sir we need PPT. Very good information. Uh, we need the PPT. Uh, will you please forward me on my email? I have mentioned chat box. 